Okay. And talking about Absar Shala, was the name coined by both of you because of opportunity Aww. and school? Oh, yes. That's how the name came together? Yes, yes. So this was a train journey. Uh, we have a mentor, B. Emily, and uh, she had helped us understand what a marketplace is. Uh, so uh, she is from US, but every year she comes to Trivandrum to have a retreat in one of the um, you know Ayurvedic centers. That's like one month where she cuts off from everybody and does not talk to anyone. She just goes in. Every year she does that. So we caught her just before she went into her retreat. Uh, it, she helped us understand how marketplaces work, how our Sarshala can uh, you know, evolve into a marketplace and understand the business aspect of it. So we were going back to Cochin from Trivandrum and in a train journey, we were thinking about all the things that she talked to us, talked to us about. And we were like, our source is opportunities and Shala is hub. So what we're doing is our hub of opportunities. We, we just fell in love with the name. We coined it and we fixed that as the name for the uh, company. Uh, but through these years, everybody has had difficulty pronouncing that name. We have gone through three rounds of uh, rebranding exercise where we brought in a lot of people, a lot of experts to think about what can be a new name. Everything has felt so blah in front of our Sarshana. They were like, we are we are not going to change that name. Sorry, we, we create new products with new names, but the company's name is just going to be our Sarshana. And AS, Ashwati and Sandeep, you know, for a filmy person like me, how can I let go of that? <laughs> okay, <laughs> talking about... Uh... Avsar Shala, as an entrepreneurial journey, Ashwati, you were pretty young yourself and Sandeep, all through college has been somebody who's been exploring and seeing opportunities and making the most of it. So together, when you look back at your own entrepreneurial journey, what would you tell? Because, okay, I'm in the city, which is called the startup <laughs> uh, capital of yeah. the country. And today everyone's talking startups. So mm -hmm. for the student community who wants to take that risk on entrepreneurship, do you think it's the best time to try or mm. should we get a little job experience and then know what startups are all about? All right. So uh, as a student, as a college student uh, or a young adult, you always think that you are inexperienced. You can't do yeah. it now. Yeah. You're quite young to do such a big thing. You can't be a CEO or a founder at 18, 19. When you hit your uh, elder age, like when mm -hmm. you actually become mature and you become uh, a proper old adult, old, uh, you think you're quite old to do it. Yeah. You think if you were 18 or 19, you would have had that energy. Maybe I wouldn't have so much risks or people depending upon me. If I were younger, I would have done it. So the fact is you are never in the right age if you don't have the right mindset. But if you have the right mindset, you always are in the right age to do it. So after starting Avsar Shala, I've met a lot of students who are entrepreneurs in their school years. They start by creating small pins and badges for, you know, like putting on the bag. They sell it on Etsy or Amazon and they are entrepreneurs. I don't know if they are making profits, but they are actually learning finance. They are learning product, you know, like placement, naming, selling, branding, a lot of things which they probably can't put a word to it. But by the time they're 18, they're so smart that, you know, you they're just full grown adults by that time uh, in terms of their brain capacity. But while you're in college, the best thing is you're surrounded by a lot of people who can be found co-founders or who can help you with uh, technology, you know, things that you are not uh, good at, they can actually chip in. And you don't really even need to pay, you know, while you're in college, they'll just do it because they can put it in their resume. So that is one big opportunity that college students just pass and do not understand, do not make use of it. And as I said, you know, it helps to be self-centered. <laughs> if you understand you want to be an entrepreneur, then you have to go out and seek out people who can help you uh, in that way. When you are an adult, you actually have the financial backing to do it, right? Now you've grown into a person who has world experience. You know people. You you are the person who knows very talented people. You know, you want an, IO, uh, an, app, uh, an uh, iOS app. You want to make an Android app. You know people who code in iOS or in Android. You can probably just give them a small stipend or promise them to pay when you are actually launching a company. And there are really talented people in your network who can do it. 
so i think uh, there are opportunities in every age group it's just your mindset so uh, i mean like people who are listening in if you think you're old no 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 you're still young to do a company you have what you your youth did not have you have the money you have the experience you have the network for young people listening in uh, you, you will not feel that you have uh, become you know like uh, uh, mature enough to start a company ever you will just feel you're old that you can't so now is the time <laughs> Okay, now that you've got mindset, uh, and you're the right person to ask this question, <laughs> uh, that what does it take to have the entrepreneurial mindset? Uh, how would you define the mindset? Mindset. Uh, entrepreneurship is not easy. It is not easy at all. Uh, it looks glamorous from outside, but sometimes we're just holding it together and we don't know from where we're getting that energy. And there are days when we feel like just throwing it all away and running away. Uh, which is also fine that's what i have understood so far entrepreneurship is a mindset it's not just about your company it's not about holding a big ego and showing people that your company is flourishing uh, the fact is no one cares you know that's one big thing i learned uh, people people look, seem to think as if i mean like you think they are they care they are watching and uh, you know they you can't fail because people will pass judgments but the fact is they have their own life and they have their own failures to deal with they probably will judge you for a minute or so they might reach out to you and ask you what happened to your company i'm not seeing any linkedin post recently i'm not seeing anything on instagram what happened to your company is it dead already sometimes that is all you know like they just spend one or two minutes to ask those questions but your day is ruined your week is ruined and you're like oh my god did does this mean like this is end for my entrepreneurial journey but yeah i mean like there they it happens it still happens even when i'm talking about this this can happen to me next week or maybe the month later last week i was asked this question i had taken a time out personally from linkedin to just not post anything i think i posted something and i just closed the app and i have not gone back to it for the last two weeks intentionally i took a break but last week i got asked this question i i am not seeing you post on linkedin any, any about anything what has happened to you and i'm like nothing i'm i'm, I'm here i'm actually you know i'm i'm traveling and i'm here but people can ask a lot of questions yeah. but that shouldn't affect you so entrepreneurial mindset is just about being resilient and being uh, understanding what you are doing to have a control or have a little bit of discipline on what you want to be doing yeah. second thing is not to actually uh, fear failure but failure when we are on the topic of failure uh, can i speak a little bit more on that and deviate yeah so there was always um, a, a thing that one of my mentors uh, as well as friend ardra chandra mauri she is another entrepreneur she had always told me uh, failure is something that uh, it's always about how you define failure yeah. nobody else can do that for you nobody else should do that for you if you think uh, failure is uh, you know close wrapping up your company then that is it you think you have failed but if you think that you no know, that was a learning maybe that is something that i can take back and you know apply in my next venture or even when if you are going back to your, going back to work you've bring brought up all these experiences life experiences into your new role mm-hmm. that is still not failure so mm-hmm. it's just a uh, exactly a mindset it's just how you define failure and back then when she taught me all these things i never really understood the gravity of it it was not easy for me to you know digest it because i was going on oh, oh, oh no 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 i have to do this i have to do that nobody can talk to me about failure right now but uh, over the years i have learned it i think uh, now i understand what she really meant by defining failure so uh, as an entrepreneur it is always a the mindset have resilience b understand when to pull the plug for a company or an idea when to pivot do not hurt yourself and do not hurt your company by assisting something that you logically or you know like practically understand needs a little bit of change do not get married to your idea do not get married to your company even do not get married to your ego as an entrepreneur you get invited to a lot of places to speak and talk and sometimes when you are not quite active on social media you will feel that they, you know people are not really 
seeing you and they don't remember you that's fine i mean sometimes you get back and get back into limelight again so uh, all these things happen and i mean you as an entrepreneur it takes a lot of energy to deal with all these things it's not the same as when you are working in a corporate company here when you, when people say that you are on your you, you are your own boss it also means that you have to be in control of your own emotions and you have to be a little bit more uh, uh, you know answerable to your own uh, downs and ups so understand that things happen and it may not be a failure in in your personal life do not call it a failure do not even think that uh, things are going to go to an end full stop over here you, things will keep coming up and as it is a mindset even if you go back to a job even if you take a pause you're still an entrepreneur you know that you will figure out a way to you know come back get back on track or maybe start a new company so look at it as a journey and uh, you know i'll just take one more second uh, dwelling on this i just met a very good friend of mine who you know launched herself into entrepreneurship just a month or so back she's full of energy full of energy as in um, envious amount of energy and uh, sitting near her i felt like she's this radiating sun you know like just glowing and wants to do a lot of things reminded of me of me uh, two years back when i thought everything was possible in my you know like if i just keep at it everything is possible after these uh, even two two and a half years what i know is everything is still possible but you really don't have to burn yourself out you can just you know take your time be comfortable with who you are and still achieve everything uh i think i learned this in a different way while i was in my college but i still did not try and uh, you know apply the same learnings when i became an entrepreneur it was still a learning curve for me and i wish my friend has the same energy but but you know if the fact is if, even if she hits that hump i'll be there to tell her that it's okay it's still sunny on the other side <laughs>